now we're joined by Congressman Steve King, Republican from Iowa. Um, tax reform. I've got to talk tax reform. We talked to Congressman uh, Kevin Brady earlier. Uh, he suggested that it was a good political argument from the president to try to get some Democrat support in the Senate for tax reform. You think that's a good idea? What kind of tax reform will we get if the Democrats are on board? <laughs> well, I just Democrats' idea of tax reform has historically been tax increases. I remember the tax reform that Bush 41 was able to negotiate. Uh, no new taxes. Well, we got tax increases, but not spending cuts. So that's what they are bent to do. And uh, maybe there are a handful of them over there that. But we lost to the Blue Dog Democrats. There used to be 53 of them, and now there are only about three of them. But they were the middle, the centrists that they wanted to balance the budget by cutting some spending, and they wanted to increase taxes too, even the most conservative. So, you, so I'm you, interested you, in that group of people. But you don't have any problem with getting support from Heidi Heitkamp, North Dakota, Joe Manchin, West Virginia, uh, and, and any other moderate. You have no problem with that, so long as it's not a tax increase that they're voting for. Well, I'm hopeful that they're for tax relief. I mean, even they know that we have the highest corporate income, income tax of any developed nation in the world, and that is the place to start right now. I mean, I would go to a national sales tax and abolish the IRS, and I know you know yeah, that, Stuart. I, I, and that's I, I, a longer I, I, okay, conversation. That, we, that's never going to happen in my lifetime. So I want you just, to live a long time and join me in celebrating one day, however. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Why can't the Republican Party pass tax cuts by itself? We should easily be able to do but that. But you can't. Well, and is the problem, I'm going to guess this, is one, well, of course, one is the filibuster in the Senate, uh, but the other piece of this is, say, on the House side, too, are people that want more, and they want their nuances, and they want to hold out for the last thing because they think they've got leverage. So in the end, it's like everybody throws their tiny little canoe anchor overboard, and then the great ship comes to a halt eventually. Uh, we, I gave this speech to conference in the first week in January, and it says, We've been pushing our agenda now for eight years under Obama, another two years when Nancy Pelosi was blocking it. It's, we've been splitting hairs on policy among ourselves all this time. Now it's time to just join together and get things done. And that means cut the corporate income tax and address the death tax and repatriate the trillions of dollars that are stranded overseas. Those things should be easy. And yet I think yeah. they're being used for leverage to get some harder things done, too. Now, the Democrats say that they could attach the DREAM Act. It's not an act, it's an executive order. But they say they can attach the DREAM Act to anything the Republicans bring to the floor this fall, including the debt ceiling. What's your response to that? Well, I'd first remind them that at least in the House of Representatives, they don't get to do that. Um, you know, they don't have the majority. Uh, they don't control the committees, they don't control the floor agenda, they don't control the rules committee. And so I don't think they should be very robust in their promises, at least in the House. In the Senate, perhaps there's some leverage over there they might be able to use. Uh, but in the end, the DREAM Act is unconstitutional. President Obama violated the Constitution. President Trump, as candidate Trump, multiple times promised that he would end the DREAM Act. We all expected that would happen January 20th. I'd have been happiest if that had been the case. Now we're eight months in. He's, he said in six months it's over, uh, but on the other hand, I might revisit it. So I think it was a kind of a Salmon-esque decision on the part of President Trump to more or less offer to cut the baby in half and sure. toss it all to Congress. Congressman, it's, I, I, it'll I, divide the Republican conference. I, I did not know that, uh, that I thought the Republicans ran the Senate and the House and that the Democrats do not. And it's not for them to attach any DREAM Act or anything to anything else. It's not their call, is it? That's right. I, I, I agree. And I only put that little caveat in there. Senate rules might give them a window of some kind that I might not understand. But of all that I do understand, what you said is precisely right. They're not in the majority in the House or the Senate, and they don't get to decide what they attach to anything, unless they might have some backdoor leverage back there that's so high. For me... I'm not sacrificing the rule of law. I'm not going to advance amnesty. And, and here's something that's just pretty interesting is that, you know, the, the House couldn't have a full repeal of Obamacare brought before it and have a vote because, according to the leadership, it would split or divide the Republican conference. And they were not willing to divide the Republican conference. So the very bill that had passed in every Congress since Obamacare was passed into law, the full repeal, couldn't get a vote in this Congress. It's due to not wanting to divide Republicans. The DREAM Act divides Republicans. 
and yet it sounds like they want to set this thing up on the fast track. Mm. And this is like the ultimate virtue signal. Oh. Um, back up and take a look at the rule of law, the Constitution, and what happens when you, when you reward lawbreakers, Stuart? Okay, we understand. Just get us a tax cut. Okay, that's it. <laughs> get us a tax cut. Time for that, all the way. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Congressman King, thanks for joining us, sir. Much Thank you, Stuart. Thank you.